Hey, hey mamas, it's your Cajun Stork here, midwife Kyra. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about a topic that might make you a little uncomfortable, but today we're gonna talk about tearing and episiotomies. So first of all, let's begin by saying that I think we have a misconception about what tearing is like during uh, delivery. Most of the time, tearing can be relatively normal, particularly for your first baby. However, it's not like this horrific experience like you could imagine if you were just tearing right now, right? Down there. You know, when the baby's being delivered, during the time that you would tear is typically at the time that the baby is crowning. And what this means is the widest part of the baby's head is gonna be pushing through the vagina at that moment. And so typically when we tear in that moment, um, all the blood supply to that area is kind of cut off a little bit. And so um, what you would experience typically is this really horrific thing, really just feels like more stretching in that area. And so I don't want you to be afraid about tearing tearing during labor um, and, and pushing because really it's just such a brief second of time and it's not going to be perceived in that moment to like what's actually happening. There are some things that we can do to reduce the likelihood of tearing during delivery. The first one is do not push on your back. The vagina is not actually straight up and down. The vagina is actually kind of curved. And so if you take this angle and you put a mom on her back, now you've got a baby that has to come down the vagina and actually against gravity upward to be born. And so in the hospital setting when you're delivering on your back and you've got a baby's head pressing down on the vagina and that thin, thin skin between the vagina and the anus called the perineum, you've got a baby, a possibly even like seven or eight pound baby's head delivering against gravity on that thin skin and oh, what do you know, we had a vaginal tear. In my practice, my moms are pretty much in any other position but on their back. Most of them deliver standing or in hands and knees position. If they're really exhausted, particularly first time moms, I have them deliver on their left side. But whatever I do, I try really hard not to deliver them on their back. So number one is switching positions and making sure that you're not delivering on your back. Number two, believe it or not, is an unmedicated birth. And so when we're having an epidural, we don't really, although we can feel pressure, we don't necessarily feel that sensation the way that you would unmedicated. And so that natural urge that you have to pop the baby out like a cork um, to relieve that pressure when you have an epidural is felt a little bit differently when it's natural. And so a lot of moms will push, 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 and then take a break. And during pushing, it's like two steps forward and one step back of the baby. And during an unmedicated birth, they can feel more of this. And so when it gets to that point of tearing, a lot of times moms will pant or they'll breathe through that sensation and let the vagina stretch naturally. So that's one thing that we can do to kind of reduce tearing. A common question, and it's actually a misconception that we have, is that perineal massage during pregnancy, not during birth, but during pregnancy, will actually reduce tearing. And um, everything that I've read lately, you know, kind of has me discouraging this. In fact, in my practice, I tell my mamas that unless they have a strong history of sexual trauma, where they kind of need to get used to having un unpleasant sensations in that area again, really perineal massage has no benefit to my mamas uh, during pushing. The best thing that they can do is just get off their backs when they're having their babies, and so I encourage them to do that. So let's talk a little bit about, about an episiotomy, because I know it's a common question is, well, if, I, if I'm gonna tear, should I just let my provider cut an episiotomy? And the answer is no. So I wanna give you a little visual about the difference between episiotomy and tearing with a piece of fabric. So first of all, let's start with um, a regular perineal skin, right? Doesn't matter how much pressure I put here. Oh, well, I was able to pop it, but still no tear, right? I'm trying really, really hard here, y'all. Okay, so there's no way I can tear. Now watch this. I'm just gonna cut a little nick. Okay, now I cut a little nick right here. Whoa, still going. Okay, 
so you get the point. Episiotomies are the same way, that if you are going to nick the vagina for a baby that probably is already gonna tear you, if you're not providing adequate support, you're gonna tear that vagina way worse than it would have torn naturally. And because an episiotomy is such an unnatural cut, I mean, you think about like in nature, anytime that you have like a laceration, let's say you cut your arm open or something, you have a jagged tear like this, that when it heals, heals like this in this little like lock-in position. But when you have an episiotomy, it is a surgical cut. It is a straight line. So you've got two straight edges trying to heal together. And it's very, very common for episiotomies to rip back open postpartum or require further surgeries to have them repaired. I only practice in a way where an episiotomy is cut to save a baby's life who might be potentially crashing on the perineum, which thank goodness that has not happened to me in my practice. Um, but you know, that is the goal of the episiotomy. It is only as medically necessary for the baby. So that's a little bit of information about tearing versus episiotomies. I just hope that it takes a little bit of the fear out of what pushing is gonna be like in an unmedicated birth. Because keep in mind that, you know, the vagina is made to stretch, but we have to work with labor and with our bottoms to to make this happen more naturally. I hope this was good information for you ladies. If you have any comments or questions or maybe some information you wanna share, I encourage you to go ahead and uh, write that below. Um, share some information with us. And also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. I'm gonna continue sharing every Monday a little bit of information from a midwife's perspective regarding your birth. Y'all have an amazing day and I'll see you next Midwife Monday. Bye-bye.